in this video, I will explain the real purpose of the Sabbath day. I will also show that keeping the weekly Sabbath does not give one Christian any advantage over another because the weekly Sabbath has nothing to do with one's salvation as some people think. I will begin by quoting from the book of Genesis where the issue of the seventh day is introduced. Genesis 2 verse 2 to 3 and I read, By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. The meaning of the Sabbath day has been severely misunderstood, with some denominations of the church claiming that only those people who observe the Sabbath will go to heaven or enter the kingdom of God. Fortunately, the Bible does not say this at all. In fact, the weekly Sabbath, which God instructed the Israelites to observe, was just a shadow event pointing to the true Sabbath day, which I will explain in this video. Just as God himself rested on the seventh day, there is also a Sabbath day of rest for those who believe in Christ. The true Sabbath day will also begin in the evening of the sixth day. What this means is that the true Sabbath will begin just as the earth reaches 7,000 years after it was created. This is because according to the way God records time, a day represents a thousand years, a fact confirmed by both the Old and New Testaments as the following verses show. Psalm 90 verse 4 and I read, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night. 2 Peter 3 verse 8, and I read, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Apostle Peter, a man who spent three years working with Jesus and who knew the secrets of the kingdom of God, reminds believers that even if they forget everything else, they must not forget that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians have ignored this important reminder, therefore failing to understand the timing of the return of the Lord Jesus and the true purpose of the weekly Sabbath day. The following passage explains what God expects us to do on the real Sabbath day, which is soon to come. Exodus 20 verses 8 to 10 and I read, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. Just as God rested on the seventh day, all those people, who have believed in the Lord Jesus will also rest on the true Sabbath, which begins on the evening of the sixth day, spanning a full 24 hours until the evening of the seventh day. This is because God defines days from evening to morning, as the book of Genesis explains. Genesis 1 verse 31, and I read, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. We are currently living in the final hours of the sixth day, since this world is almost 6,000 years old, when we count the years from the days of Adam, using the years recorded in the Bible. The return of the Lord Jesus is the event which ushers in the real Sabbath day, when all true believers will rest from their works, just as God rested from his own work of creation, on the seventh day. This is the reason why the Lord Jesus himself, in an effort to confirm that he will return to the earth after the sixth day, made a demonstration of his glorious return through the events of the transfiguration, which are recorded in the books of Matthew and Luke. I will quote from the book of Matthew. Matthew 16 verse 28 
and 17 verse 1 to 3 and I read truly I tell you some who are standing here will not test death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom after six days Jesus took with him Peter James and John the brother of James and led them up a high mountain by themselves there he was transfigured before them his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light just then there appeared before the Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. The story begins with Jesus telling his disciples that some of them would not die before they saw the Lord himself coming in his kingdom. This seems like a strange statement because all the disciples died before they saw Jesus coming back to the earth to establish his kingdom. So what then was Jesus talking about? Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that the Lord himself would appear in his full glory on the seventh day, which is the day of rest or the true Sabbath, not the shadow Sabbath which the Jews are required by law to honor every week until it is fulfilled when Jesus returns. We must remember that everything which Jesus did when he was on earth was a prophecy meant to show us events related to the end of time and all his actions and all his words were parables designed to help us understand the future the transfiguration was therefore meant to show that the lord jesus would return to the earth six days after god created the earth if we use god's own calendar this confirms that jesus will return to the earth six thousand years after the creation of the earth if we use the human calendar to count the days. This is because with God a day is like a thousand years as I explained earlier. I will return to the book of Hebrews for more information concerning the true Sabbath day that is coming soon. Hebrews 3 verses 7 to 11 and I read, So as the Holy Spirit says, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness where your ancestors tested and tried me though for 40 years they saw what i did that is why i was angry with that generation i said their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways so i declared on oath in my anger they shall never enter my rest the passage tells us that some of the Israelites who came out of Egypt failed to enter into the promised land of Canaan because they refused to believe God, just as some Christians are doing today. As a result of their unbelief, they all perished in the wilderness, as some Christians are also perishing. Because the Israelites did not enter God's day of rest, the Lord has set a certain day of rest in the future for us Christians to enter. God has called this day today, which is the true Sabbath day that we will enter into when the Lord Jesus returns. I will quote once more from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 4 verses 6 to 7 and I read, Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience. God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The Bible tells us that God rested on the seventh day and called it holy. In order to ensure that the seventh day remained holy, God commanded the children of Israel, who are the descendants of Jacob, but not the Gentile Christians, to celebrate the Sabbath day every week so that the day would remain on the Jewish calendar until it is fulfilled when the real seventh day comes, which God calls today. This is the true Sabbath day. Hebrews 4 verses 9 to 11 and I read, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. 
Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. The real Sabbath day is what people call the Millennium Kingdom, a thousand-year period of total joy and total peace upon the earth, which will be witnessed only by those who believe, not by those who have no faith in what God has promised. The book of Hebrews tells us to make every effort to enter into the coming Sabbath so that we will not miss this glorious day through disobedience and unbelief as they did in the wilderness. I will quote again from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 4 verses 9 to 11 and I read, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. The Sabbath day is therefore a future day of rest, to be celebrated only by those Jews and Gentile Christians who will be resurrected after the great tribulation because they have believed that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God. This is what the Sabbath day is all about. It is a thousand year long period of rest when Jesus and his blessed saints rule the earth from the city of Jerusalem, which is the throne of the living God as the prophet Jeremiah reveals. Jeremiah 3 verse 17 and I read, At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. When you fully understand the true meaning of the Sabbath, then you will know that Christians are not required to honor the weekly seventh day as some Christians do. But whether a Christian honors the weekly Sabbath or not, it makes no difference to God and has nothing to do with the salvation of that person. What is important is to work towards entering the true Sabbath day, which is the millennium kingdom of the Lord Jesus coming to the earth any time from now. The Apostle Paul made it clear that keeping the weekly Sabbath does not give any Christian advantage over another, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Romans 14 verses 5 to 6 and I read, One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Colossians 2 verses 16 to 17 and I read, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Indeed, the weekly Sabbath was just a type and shadow of the true Sabbath day of rest, which is coming soon when those who have believed the Lord will rest from their works. The next passage shows how true believers will spend the Sabbath day which will last a thousand years. Micah 4 verses 3 to 4 and I read, Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid for the Lord Almighty has spoken. This is the mystery of the Sabbath day, a period when we shall sit under the vine tree and under the fig tree and enjoy a thousand years of total rest and total peace under the righteous leadership of Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. During this 1,000 year long Sabbath day, even the animals will celebrate 
as the prophet Isaiah reveals. Isaiah 65 verse 25 and I read, The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The reason why the serpent will eat dust is because during the thousand year millennium period, when Jesus and his people are ruling the world from Jerusalem, the devil and his wicked angels will all be locked up in the bottomless pit, serving a thousand year imprisonment for misleading the whole world. Such are the ways of our God.